Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you Gearhead vs Nilla in round 2 of the second Steel Division 2 Championship. Today they are going to be playing on Boba and on our left in the red team playing on the Soviet side we have Gearhead using Grupa Churin and the Maverick deployment type. And on our right playing on the Axis side in the blue we have Nilla using the 25th Panzer Grenadier and the Flatline deployment type. So Gearhead, a man after my heart, using the Grupa Churin. I feel like it has the potential to be such a strong 1v1 division. And I'm really sad that I don't see it more. But the reasons why I think it's going to be really strong, or it could potentially be really strong, is just because it has access to strong infantry in the form of the Soraki DP. It has all of the different support squads that you'd ever want. Flamethrowers, PTRSs. Uh, it's got uh, a few infantry guns, I believe. And then you can support all of that with cheap T-34s. So you've got decent medium armor supporting some strong infantry. And in an early game push, that can be really, really vital. If you come up against any heavy targets, you've got access to the PA-3s, which can rocket them to death. So, yeah, there's a very versatile uh, division for aggressive plays in the early game. And... I'm not so sure about the Maverick deployment type for Turin. I think the punch from Turin really comes from the very start of the game, so Vanguard would be ideal. Uh, but Mavericks can still work, and it basically shows that Gearhead's going to have to win by the end of Phase B, otherwise he's going to be in big trouble. Maverick ca can have a bit of lifetime into Phase C due to the sheer amount of points it gets in Phase B, but once you get out of that reserve, you're in trouble. Nella, however, he's gone for the flatline deployment type, definitely going to have the advantage in phase C, and will have basically decent income across uh, the board to deal with the Mavericks punch in phase B. 25th Panzer Grand, let's talk a little bit about them. Very, very strong recon vehicles, and that's why it's actually banned uh, quite a lot. It does have the decent infantry, obviously, to back it up, like Panzer Grands and Pioneers, but... Yeah, the fact that you can support those Panzergrens and Pioneers with strong, fast recon vehicles is really what a lot of the top players enjoy about that particular division. But let's have a look at what's actually going down. So on the side of Gearhead, we have the Ognemachiki at the start, a PTRS-41 squad, so the little support squads that I was talking about. There's a 76mm infantry gun, we've got the Storaki Kom Lotti. It's going to be a Maxim, surprised to see the Maxims in the deck. Uh, Tanko Dasaniki, Sturm of Niki Rocks, and Sturki DP. So yeah, you can see you can even get some Sturm of Niki Rocks as well in Churin, which is really, really nice. Then he's got a couple of these M5L Stuarts. Personally, I prefer to use T-34s, uh, but those can work, especially good at the start because they're fast and they can get really quick uh, transport snipes. And they also have a couple of machine guns to help with uh, supporting infantry. 120mm mortar from the start from Gearhead. I feel like the only reason you'd bring in a 120mm from the start is maybe for smoke, because one on its own is probably not going to be terribly effective unless he plans to back that up with a second pretty quickly after the beginning. Going for more PTRS squads uh, towards the center with the Oktomachiki Maxim. Two Stuarts instead of a T-34 again. Uh, Maxim, and he's got the commander in there with the Sturm of Niki Rocks and a 45mm AT gun. Also adding some Tanko Desa Niki. Further down, we see the PTRS Oknemachiki Storki DP to cover the bottom side. Over on the side of Nila, on the top, he has multiple units of Panzergrenadiers. These all have Panzerfaust. Further down, uh, we see the Panzergrenadiers and Pioneer Führer with Panzerschreck there. Then we've got even more Panzergrenadiers, Panzerschrecks, and so on. So he's got two Panzergrenadiers with Panzerfaust. He's got the Two Panzergrenz without Ersatztruppen, Pioneer Führer, Commandant. So looking to give his Ersatztruppen the two-star veterancy, I'm sure. And on the very bottom side, two IG-18s, Panzerburgser, Panzerburgser, Panzergren, Panzerschreck. So it looks like on this bottom side, Nil is going to be playing a lot more defensive. He's using the high ground here to hold it, hold his ground. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like most of the push is going to be coming through the center. Maybe going to try and go for these two flags in the center early on. Also, maybe a little push for this flag as well. Above is quite an interesting one because it is a lake map which can cause quite a lot of stalemates. But due to the way that the... Well, it's not a lake, a river, sorry. Um, but yeah, due to the way that the river is laid out, it actually means that 
either side can get troops onto the opposing side at the start and that means that there is quite often less chance of a stalemate than other uh, river maps either way uh, let's see how far aggressive Nil is going here so he's actually st stopping short across the center maybe expecting a strong push from gearhead and yeah 120 mil mortar was used for smoke as expected uh, these panzer guns going straight across the river there trying to get into a decent position these two panzer guns i'm not sure they're going to be there before the Ogdemachiki. the Ogdemachiki cheeky in those uh, jeeps will manage to get into the light cover to at least contest the panzer grands yeah nella just going for a defensive start across the board really the combat has come all the way across wow this is risky gearhead putting his combat right in the face of Nilla's troops at the start loads of Erzots to have been here no leader next to them so the commandant's not really giving them the two-star venerancy at the moment IG-18s uh, they're going to be engaging what well, looks like that Maxim yep two tanker Dasaniki going to come along honestly if these tanker Dasaniki get the two-star venerancy they'll actually be very effective now the initial push from the Ogdemachiki forced the Panzergrenz away from the edge of the forest which has allowed the Sturm of Nika rocks to get in here and deal with the Panzergrenz very very quickly. Tango Desaniki also using a Molotov to help out. T-34, 76, 1942 also coming up. That's going to be a nice break in the front line on that top side uh, for Gearhead. Uh, this combat is still under fire. The Tanko Desaniki have unloaded. They're trying to trade currently with the Panzergrenz. But it looks like... Oh, they are going to kill off the Azot Open there. These Panzergrenz are going to get mowed down by the Tanker Dasaniki. The three-star veterancy paying dividends at the moment. I'm going to have a take out another unit of ours that's there. And a nice break in the middle as well now. For Gearhead. Managed to keep his combat alive. It's only on one man remaining. Personally, I'd love to see that get out of dodge. Move back. Bring in a leader unit instead. Because that is so damn risky right now. And losing your commander at the very start of the game can be devastating for the rest of the game because uh, two-star veterancy units can be extremely effective. Now one thing Nell has got to be careful of here is that he doesn't get cut off. If some units of Gearhead move up, he might be able to connect his front line here surrounding these units, which would lose their influence on the front line and these three flags, uh, which would put Nelly even further behind. Nice use of the Panzer Strike there. Does manage to take out one of the Stuarts. Goes up in flames. Uh, Sturm of Niki rocks now moving in to potentially deal with the Panzergrenz. Now these Sturm of Niki rocks could probably take on two Panzergrenz and win. I'm not so sure with the Pioneer Führer there because of the HE grenade that the Pioneer Führer provides. Now these Panzergrenz are going to do a lot of damage to the Tango Dasaniki as they move across the open. Even though they have three star veterancy, they're still going to take quite a bit of damage when the MG42 start getting on target. IG 18s. Uh, they're currently attack moving right to the edge of this hill. It looks like Nilla's looking for line of sight shots onto any infantry uh, toward the center here. T-3476 Rose Vedka being used by a Gearhead. This is actually a really nice choice. I like this a lot. Allows him to get actually quite aggressive against his infantry in the tree lines. Usually this M5L would really struggle to see the Panzer Grenadiers, but with the T-3476 Rose Vedka there, with the extra optics, um, they're going to be pretty good. Now, it seems here Nilla's actually managed to be the one that gets the surround onto Gearhead. I don't think Gearhead really reacted quick enough to get his surround onto Nilla. Uh, saying that, this M5L has managed to reconnect the front line, but that's not going to necessarily collapse Nilla because Nilla's got to the edge of the map here. So that little bubble is going to stay alive for a little while longer. Soki DP taking on Panzer Grenadiers at range. Panzer Grenadiers are not in cover at all, they're just getting mown down in the water going to be probably killed off by the Stroki as they try and get away. Mid-range engagement, Stroki so damn good. Now 45 more AT gun comes right across there, does get killed straight away. Panzergrenz also take out the leader that was coming in. Looks like the Commandant went down. So yeah, <laughs> Gearhead losing his commander at the start. That was so, so ballsy from Gearhead and he just didn't really have too much to back that up. Bringing in Storaki Komroti to give his Therm of Niki rocks and the Storaki DP some veterancy. Oh, there goes the Stuart. That's going to relinquish a flag back in favor of Nila. 
On this top side, this is a very, very precarious position for Gearhead as well. Panzer books are moving into position, might be able to deal with the T-34-76-1942, but I believe this only has one damage, so it's going to take a little while to kill that, that's for sure. In the current version, uh, the Panzer books are, I think, maybe has two damage now. Uh, they did buff it a little bit because APCR just wasn't that strong anymore. Uh, the Stoke Comrati has managed to get in position. That's going to be three star Stem of Nico Rocks. Oh, oh, look how quickly they took care of that Panzer Grenadier. Now going to be continuing to move through there. Already killed off the Pioneer Führer on their own. Stoke DP with two star variancy just demolishing the Panzer Grenadiers with the help of the tanks there. Some really nice infantry trades for gearhead but Nilla is really starting to take control of the mid and bottom side of the map moved up his ig and panzer books are right to the edge of the river here now going to be moving some ersatz truppen in to maybe have a little bit of a push managed to get a panzer grenadier across uh, the river here and this panzer grenadier is also pushing the flag on the far side of gearhead now these troops on the top side haven't really been attacked just yet stoke komrati does find the panzer books there so Gehead's going to know that's there, but not too far he can really go with his T-3476 right now. Other than potentially, I guess he could go back and, and kill this T-3-1. Looks like these two 1942s behind might manage to pick that off. The T-3476 is there. Stoke DP rushing forwards to try and help this push, but the leader has gone down. The Stoke Comrati is dead. Uh, these close-range infantry are in a really tough spot, because if they try and move across to engage the Panzergrenz right now, uh, what's going to happen is they'll just get killed, because... They won't be able to engage within 100 meters before they get spotted. And that's the beauty of Panzergrenz in light cover. But Panzergrenz here found some Ognemachiki. It looks like the Stugs are going to be able to help finish that off. And we're starting to see a hefty lead for Nilla. The Stem of Niki Rocks have again been found. The Erzastropen with those two-star veterancy car 98s are actually going to be able to do quite a lot of damage to the Stem of Niki Rocks and Gearhead. He really can't do too much about it. He can try and maybe run towards one of these Ersatz Truppen, but as soon as he starts moving, he's going to take even more damage. So it uh, does have to be very careful. PE3 Biss coming in with the Rocket Strike, looking to pin down as many units as he can with that. So another use for these AT Rocket Planes is you can uh, fire position with them to pin down infantry. Now, in the recent build, I think they removed the ability to do that, but Gearhead making use of that. Nice move, just makes these Panzergrenz forced to fall back and yeah, worked effectively. The close range infantry here has been taken out. Uh, looks like the infantry guns getting involved. Two more Storoki DP on the way. These ones are going to be much closer, able to deal with the Panzergrenz in light cover. Oh, look at that. Panzergrenz with Panzerfaust does manage to take out the T 3476 Rosvedka. Stem of Niki rocks, still doing plenty of damage. This is going to have so many kills. Absolutely annihilates the Hazard Stroopen squad. Who is next? It asks. Uh, Stroke DP having to go at the Panzergrenz. Honestly, one for one in close range combat. Panzergrenz tend to win. Just because the MG42s are so much better than the DP. Uh, but anyway, Hazard Stroopen found the Akdemachiki there. They're probably going to be able to take that out. Push up a bit more. M5Ls clean up the IG-18 on this bottom side. Panzer Boxer though. Might be a threat if those decide to move forwards. Stugs can clean up a Maxim. Panzergren under fire from the infantry gun up on the hill, but once the Stugs get into line of sight, should be able to cover the Panzergren's moving in. Allow them to maintain hold of the, over that objective. Now what's going to happen to these Stem of Niki rocks is they're going to get completely overwhelmed. They were doing so well isolating individual infantry squads and killing them off, but with the abundance of Flammenwerfers now arriving to back up the Urzastrup and Persh, uh, Nilla's making some strong moves here, that's for sure. Now, I mentioned the use of recon vehicles. Nilla's got quite a lot of them here on the top side. He's going to be having a go at the T-34-76-1942s. If he can find side shots, then it might work. The other thing he can try and go for is just pinning them down and surrendering them. Which might work. Not going to have a great penetration chance. Not against the 90 front armor of the 1942s. But yeah, both of those are going to be pinned down. That's going to be two surrenders. Two T-34s are gone. Across the board, Nella's decided to go for Stugs. Supported by the Panzer... Or the Ezerstropen uh, Flammenwerfers. So... Yeah, that's... I guess the other great thing about 25th Panzergrenz. Is they do have the availability in form of the 
uh, as us throw open on two infantry squads going down there unnecessarily for gearhead gearhead is certainly losing his momentum in this game he he was doing really really well at the start i feel but just ended up getting overwhelmed by nilla's infantry and made some unfortunate errors and it's kind of led to a position where uh, nilla has way more, more troops on the map these two three ones are going to be so difficult to deal with because at this range unless the stalky dp are lucky enough to get crits <laughs> like in this case with the gun jam uh the 20 mil auto cannons will just rip through those squads a few more panzer guns are going to be arriving on that top side uh these stugs that one's going to be able to kill the t-34 at close range uh this stug not really threatened by a 45 mil at that range so yeah looks like now it's still going to maintain control here. The T-34-76 was Vedka. Unfortunately didn't get like the second shot off before the Stug did, which is why the Stug won. My IG-18 going to try and help out with this half track. Half track will be able to do a bit of damage to the Erzastropen as they move forwards. Pack 38. Will be able to do the damage though. Did use up his APCR shells in that engagement. Not going to really make too much of a difference. Won't need APCR shells to clean up the M5Ls. Panzergrenz, they've now unloaded two, three ones in close cover, and the Stug 3 there is going to make that very difficult to push back for Gearhead. Uh, yeah, now that position's secure. This bridge, getting across it, it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, so. Gearhead should just forget about the top side, start focusing on gaining background in the middle because he's losing this flag, this flag, and this flag uh, to Nilla, which is a big deal. He's also lost this flag, so that's four flags in this area alone that Nilla is controlling uh, that he needs to take back. He has managed to keep influence on that flag briefly and is contesting that. This bottom flag on the bridge is going to be difficult to get back as well because of the high ground for Nilla. So yeah, this center area is really where Gearhead needs to focus right now. And it looks like he is planning to. Soki DP, Tanker Tessaniki, two Stuarts and the T-34-76 coming in. Now just got to find eyes onto those infantry squads and push them out. Unfortunately at this point for Gearhead, his Sturm of Niki, I think he's probably used them all up. Um, so he's not going to be able to have that helping him effectively. Stroki DP are really what he's going to have to rely on. We have now moved into phase B, so he should have more of those available. He's actually going to be bringing up an SU-85. Uh, this is going to be costing 60 points. Decent for taking on the Stugs, I guess, because the Stugs do in fact cost more. They cost 70 points. Uh, so it can get value out of that SU-85, but we'll have to micro it carefully because it does have very low rate of fire. So you kind of want to use them from light cover or at least from like an edge where you can move out, shoot, and then reverse. So Throop pushing out the Tango Dessaniki. Looks like they traded Molotovs there. There's Throop getting in line of sight of the M2A1 and the uh, T-34 is probably not a great idea. I'm not a fan of the T-34 engaging the Stug from range. Stugs are great against T-34s at range. The standard T-34-76s, that is. And there you saw it. As a Stug takes it out, no problem whatsoever. IG-18 managing to get quite a lot of shots, actually, onto the Stuggy DP, weakening that squad quite substantially. Uh, that does leave him vulnerable to these couple of Panzer Grenadiers that look like they're going to push across on that bottom side and just try and secure um, potentially another flag down there. Only 17 to 7, 9 minutes until Nilla takes the victory. And, and Nilla is in a very, very commanding position. Stroki Komroti going to get found by Nilla. Gearhead not going to be able to get them out of there. I think even though we're in phase B and Gearhead has Maverick deployment type, the division just really doesn't suit being in that position. And that's why I think Vanguard is so important for the uh, for Turin because you saw how how aggressive he could be at the start, and really made good ground. Honestly, he was like fourteen to ten in a in a nice position, but just didn't really have the extra few points and extra few infantry squads to secure his position, and therefore got overrun. 
by the abundance of infantry that the 25th Panzergren have, as well as those recon vehicles. So yeah, Nilla trading very, very well. 1,475 kills, 865 losses. Uh, the reason that he built up so much is because of those kills. And yeah, so on the at the end there, he more or less had double the points on the map than Gearhead did. And Gearhead decided to surrender, which I think is fair enough because he was in a pretty dire position after those trades around the five to 10 minute mark. Either way, uh, kills, Stem of Niki Rocks. Really lovely squads if you can micro them at the 100 meter range. And this one took out the Pioneer Fjodor, Panzergrenz, three Panzergrenz there, and an Erzostrobin. So great stuff. Tango Dessa Niki with a three star Venerate C, also great stuff. But I really didn't like the way that Gearhead threw for forwards his commander at the start. I feel like it was very reckless. Very reckless, sorry. <laughs> if I can speak properly. Um, but yeah, so one mistake to be made. One mistake made there, uh, definitely should have relied on the Straki Kamrati instead to provide that veteran sea across the river, uh, just so that he could keep his commander safe and then continue to get good trades with his infantry for the rest of the game. Um, because as soon as that commander is gone, uh, his Straki are not three star veteran sea anymore, they're only two star veteran sea, and that makes a huge difference when Nilla's going to be pushing his Panzer against the three star veteran sea and his Urza to open to two star veteran sea. So yeah, pretty important stuff. T-34, 1942s. Interesting to see those used. Um, they are very strong because uh, of the 90 uh, front armor and they do have, or well, they only cost 50 points, uh, 490 front armor, which is quite nice. Personally, if you're going for like a very aggressive, speedy play at the start, I like the 1943 variants um, just because of you can get more value out of them potentially um, when you start to buy a lot of buy a lot more of them uh, but yeah the m5ls are okay I, i'm personally not too much of a fan of them but they did all right uh Stoker dp though those are the squads to be looking out for and they did manage to trade with panzergrens quite well losses the stugs were tough for you had to deal with uh they kind of just built up and it looked as though gear just didn't have anything to deal with them he did have that one rocket plane uh, but that's about it and at the point he brought in the rocket plane and used it on the infantry you're not getting really enough value out of that because the p3s with those at rockets are quite expensive and these stugs yeah they really really did work on gearheads forces panzergren's picking up a few units here and there not too much value out of any particular infantry squad in sheer amount of Erzatstruppen did manage to get the better of the Sturm of Niki, supported by the Flammenwerfer. And that's really how Nella kind of started to get full control over that game. So yeah, an interesting one. I think Gearhead had, had a chance for sure, but then kind of dropped the ball uh, moving into phase B. Uh, and using a Maverick deployment type, I think it's questionable with Turin. I'd really like to see somebody use Vanguard with it or Flatline. I think Flatline might actually suit it as well. Anyway, that's it from me. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.